So Mona, what's the most precious possession you own? My son. Your son? How old is he? Two. Two years old. Oh, that's one. What's his name? Dylan. Well, I can understand how someone would, would love their son and daughter and be the most precious possession. <laughs> would he be more precious than your eyes? Yes. Whoa, the most no, precious. No hesitation. Oh, that's so good to hear a mother with such love. So what do you think happens after someone dies? I think that they become a spirit and I think that they slowly find their way either to heaven or hell. Slowly? Why would it have to be slowly? I think something goes on. I think they caught, get caught in the middle. What is it called when they get caught in the middle? It starts with a P? Yeah, purgatory? Purgatory. Are you Roman Catholic? No, I'm actually Christian. You're Christian? You think purgatory exists? I do. Why would you think purgatory exists? It's just a strong feeling that I have. Okay. Let's say I've got a knife in my back. You're a Christian. I've got three minutes to live. Can you tell me how I can get to heaven? Quick, I've got three minutes to live. What would you tell me? I'd say pray, 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 off. <laughs> Just pray? Pray. What do pray I pray? For forgiveness. I'm already praying. Beg for forgiveness. What for? For all your mistakes that you've ever made. So how can I be forgiven? Only God can forgive you, and it's his decision to make. So how does God forgive? What do I have to do? If I'm a Hindu, is that okay? I just say, God, forgive me. I'm so sorry. That's what I believe. I believe that God will choose whether or not he wants to forgive you. What about if I'm a Muslim? I don't think it matters what you are as long as you believe in God. Okay. So it doesn't matter. So when Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father except by me, did he mean it? He says you cannot get to God except through him. And you're a Christian. You believe that. I do believe that you cannot get to God through him. Without Jesus. Without Jesus. So why would I just need to pray for God, to God for forgiveness if I don't need Jesus? I mean, I need Jesus. Jesus is God. Okay. They are okay. one. So all I have to do is say, God, please forgive me for my sins, and I'm going to get everlasting life. Hopefully. Instantly. If, if God believes that you deserve to receive that. <laughs> okay. So I have to deserve to receive it. That's why you're talking about purgatory. Yes. Okay. So let's go through some of the... Do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments? Do I what? Have you kept the Ten Commandments? Are you a good person? I am a good person. I follow most of the Ten Commandments as regularly as possible. Okay. Well, let's go through some of them and see if you're a good person. Are you ready? Yeah. This may be going to hurt just a little, but it's a diagnosis so you can have the cure. Okay? So stay with me. Okay. All right. How many lies do you think you've told in your whole life? An uncountable number. So what do you call someone who's told an uncountable number of lies? A liar. Have you ever stolen something? Even if it's small, irrespective of its value? Of course. Okay, what do you call everybody has. Hmm? What do you call someone who steals things? A thief. So what are you? A thief. A lying thief. A lying thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain? Oh, I'm sorry, God. <laughs> I love you, God. Yes, I have used God's name in vain. So you've used his name as a cuss word? It's very serious and it's called blasphemy. Now, Jesus said if you look with lust, you commit adultery in the heart. Ever looked at someone with lust, even once? Yes. So, Myrna, here's a quick summation. I'm not judging you. This is how God sees you, as a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. So if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on the Day of Judgment, we've looked at four of them, you're going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty, according to you. <laughs> well, not me. I'd, I'd, I'd say you can go to heaven if I was God, but I'm not God. I'm not perfect. He's holy and righteous. So would you go to heaven or hell if you're guilty? Hell. Now, does that concern you? Because there's no such thing as purgatory according to the Bible. You can't work it out. So what are you going to do? I'm not concerned because I have a good relationship with God. And I've asked God for forgiveness for my sins. Mm -hmm. so all you have to do is ask for forgiveness. How would you react if I said the Bible says something completely different than what you've told me? And, that, and it's hard to say this, but I think you're very wrong and I want to make sure you're right before you die. This is so important. Because the Bible says something different. Did you know that? I don't know the Bible as well as I should. Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you so that you can consider this, this because this is such an important issue, not just for you, but for your little boy. Because you want to teach him truth. Right. You want him to go to heaven, don't you? Right. Okay. Yes. The Bible says there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. Each one of us has a multitude of sins, a massive amount. Every time you lust or lie or steal or blaspheme, you're storing up God's wrath that's going to come against you on the day of judgment. And no amount of confessing can get rid of them. There's only one thing that can wash away your sins. And that comes because God is rich in mercy, became a human being 2,000 years ago, 
suffered and died on the cross taking the punishment for the sin of the world. We broke God's law. Jesus paid our fine in full. On the cross, he cried out, it is finished. Then he rose from the dead and defeated death. Because of Jesus paying your fine, God can now legally totally dismiss your case. He can not only just dismiss your case and forgive your sins, but he can make you righteous in his sight by giving you the righteousness of Christ. It's called imputation, where God will put on you a robe of righteousness so that you're perfect and holy and pure in the sight of a perfect and holy and pure God. So nothing you can do can save yourself, either in purgatory or in this life, by doing anything. What you've got to do is repent and trust alone in Jesus. This is what the Bible says. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If I give you a gift and you toss me a dollar and I take it, it's no longer a gift, is it? It's, an, it's a purchase. And nothing we can toss God in the area of good work can purchase everlasting life. It only comes by His, his goodness as a gift. Muna, God loves you so much, much. He provided a way for you to be forgiven and have everlasting life as a free gift. All you have to do with His help is repent and trust alone in Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. Really? Are you thinking about this? Yes. This is so important. This is where you're going to spend eternity. And most people think they're going to buy everlasting life off God by giving Him their good, good works. And the Bible says all our works, all our righteousnesses, all our good deeds are as filthy rags in His sight. Nothing can please Him because it's like offering a judge $10 because you're guilty. And you think He's going to let you go because you're sliding $10 across the bench to Him. It's a detestable act of bribery when you do that to a judge. The only thing that can save you is the mercy of the judge and God's rich in mercy and he's made that provision for you. So, Myrna, if you died today and God gave you justice, you'd end up in hell according to the Bible. You've got to do two things to be saved. You've got to repent and trust alone in Jesus. When do you think you'll do that? Right after I'm done speaking to you. <laughs> you mean that? Yes. May I pray with you? Yeah.